As the project developer, you are responsible for delivering the editor experience to your content authors. This video will explain how to take a web design and break it down into reusable sections for components. Then, reconstruct the content structure as custom types and slices using Slice Machine. This will allow you to do less coding while delivering a flexible publishing experience to your authors in Prismic. To explain the best practices for breaking down a design, we'll take the example of this product page from our client, Le Bouche Rouge. A product page is a good example as we'll expect the content authors to make many different instances of this page, but we'll only have to model it once. A standard web page can be broken into sections. A section in this case spans the full width of the page and includes related content. In our example, it's easy to see where sections can be defined. First, you have the menu, then the main product purchase section, and each group of related content as you move down the page can be easily seen with natural visual breaks, including padding and headings. The first section we see on the page, the menu, will appear on many pages with the exact same content. So there's no point in adding this content multiple times. This means the best practice is to create this document once and query it on the page level in the web app. Before you get to that step, you should create a single menu custom type and add any fields you might need for your menu in a group in the static zone. Usually, at least a link field and a label although more complex navigations will require a more complex setup. Pushing the custom type to Prismic will deliver a simple publishing experience for the author creating the menu. Now, for the rest of the content in this design, you should create a repeatable custom type and give it a name that represents its purpose or structure, like product page. The first thing you should always add in custom types that represent pages is the non-visual content like the URL represented here by the UID. You add this non-visual content here in the static zone. You can also add here metadata such as SEO titles and descriptions. For the rest of the visual sections that we've divided our page into, each of these sections should be built as a slice. You can create these using the slice builder and give these sections names representative of their structure, not their content. So, related products, not related makeup. If you take a website section such as this one, you can notice there are two kinds of content in this section. Things like the title of the section appear once. So when you convert sections into slices, you add fields to represent this kind of content in the non-repeatable zone. Then, for the block below, which contains four cards, you should only model one card with a link for the product info you will pull to this page, but add it in the repeatable zone. This allows a clear, simple publishing experience for the content authors as now they can add as many of these repeatable blocks as they need. Sometimes, it might not be obvious at first, but many sections share a very similar structure but may differ in only a small number of ways. For example, these two slices differ in the positioning of their images, the styling of their drop-downs and the inclusion of more fields such as a title and the link. You can model both these slightly different sections together as a slice with variations. Then the differences can be rendered conditionally in the code using the variation ID you add in Slice Machine. Delivering slices like this to your authors will make the publishing experience when building their pages completely flexible and independent. Plus, mean less coding for you and your development team.